This is an AQA A-level chemistry question. It's predominantly based around atomic structure, but it also includes alkanes, halo alkanes, and there is within this question a six marker. So try each section carefully, give yourself time to see what answers you can develop, and then review once you're done. Here's part A, parts B and C, part D, and part E, which is the six marker. Okay, taking a look at part A, the question is about halogenoalkanes, often known as haloalkanes also. Chlorine atoms are formed in the upper atmosphere when ultraviolet radiation causes CCL bonds in CFCs to break. When to write two equations to show how chlorine atoms catalyze the decomposition of ozone. These are direct from your textbook, your notes, your workbooks, whatever you've done your work in, these will be there and you simply have got to remember them. In the first instance, a chlorine radical reacts with an ozone, O3, to make a ClO radical and O2. That ClO radical then goes on to react with another O3 to make a chlorine radical and two more O2. You can see there you're regenerating the chlorine radical, showing that it's acting as a catalyst. And you can see that the overall reaction, just as additional information here, is that 2O3 goes on to become 3O2. Moving on to part B, chloroethane reacts with potassium hydroxide in the presence of propan-1-ol to form ethene. State the role of the potassium hydroxide and the role of the propan-1-ol in the reaction. The role of the potassium hydroxide in this particular type of reaction is a base, and we will see that when we look at it mechanistically below. In the presence of propan-1-ol, the propan-1-ol is acting as a solvent. We're then asked to name and outline a mechanism for the reaction in part B between chloroethane and potassium hydroxide to produce ethene. So name the mechanism and draw the mechanism. I would always on these draw the mechanism and then go back to name it because you can reason out the name rather than try to learn it as a fact. So my chloroethane and my OH- are drawn out here. You can see that the mechanism has three marks, one for the arrow from the lone pair to the hydrogen on the carbon adjacent to the carbon with the chlorine. That's acting as a base, as we saw above. It's accepting a proton. We then have our second mark for the CH bond electrons moving in to the CC bond to form a double bond. And we get our third mark for the arrow from the CCL bond to the CL, signifying the CL going. Now, what type of mechanism is this? We can see that we are removing things, and that makes it very easy to see, especially as we're also making a double bond, which is another big giveaway, that it is elimination. We then move on to part D. The structure of polymer A is shown. Draw the structure of the monomer used to form polymer A. So the trick here is to find the smallest possible repeating unit. And the smallest possible repeating unit I've put here in three different colours. Now just recreating that down below will not be enough because we have to remember that in addition polymerization we start with an alkene. So we need to remember that the CC bond is substituted with a double bond. That takes us finally to the six marker. Chemical analysis shows that a chlorofluoroalkane B contains by mass 51.6% of fluorine, 32.1% of chlorine and no hydrogen. Chlorine exists as two isotopes, 35 and 37, in the ratio 3 to 1. Fluorine only exists as one isotope, with a mass number of 19. A mass spectrum of B is obtained using electron impact ionization. The mass spectrum shows three molecular ion peaks at MZ220, 222 and 224. Determine the formula of each of the three molecular ions of B. Predict and explain the ratio of the relative abundances of each of the three molecular ion peaks at MZ220, 222 and 224. And you must show your working. Now, as always, with the six marker, you've got your levels, whether you're a level one, a level two, or a level three. And to get to the level three, and you can read this in your own time and pause the video, but to get to a level three, you really need to have secure knowledge of all of the three stages that I'm going to run through here. 
and stage one is where we do an initial empirical formula calculation showing all of the working as you can see here to get to the formula C3, Cl2, F6. To get stage two, it's then determining the formulae of the three molecular ions. Well, for this, we need to think about the fact that the only difference really is whether we have chlorine 35 or chlorine 37. So in the 220, that will be 235 chlorines. In the 224, that will be 2 chlorine 37s. And in the 222, that will be chlorine 35 and a chlorine 37. And then for stage 3, we would need <clears throat> to get the ratios of 9 to 6 to 1. Now, the way that you look at that is you consider, first of all, the relative abundances of chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. And you must also consider that the chlorine 35, chlorine 37 could occur in two different ways. And if you take a look through the figures there, I hope you can see where that has come from. That takes us to the end of this question. Thank you for listening.